Now that you've looked at the structure of both an Apple value chain and a wine value chain, it's time to have a look at just how complex working value chains can be. If you imagine that a single wine chain is like a piece of string that links the grape grower through to the winery, to the retailer and end consumer, then consider how each link along that piece of string can easily have branches coming off it at different stages. This wine business is also likely to have multiple grape growers supplying them with grapes. The business may also have a cellar door, which is an outlet at their winery. Here they can sell branded individual products of wine directly to the consumer when they visit their site. Now, what if the business also sells wine into China in addition to its other markets? The chain would start to look more complex still. Let's follow this example further. Our wine business is now selling bulk wine to China it is likely they will need more wine grapes and possibly a different winemaker more used to making bulk wine suitable for the Chinese market. This could be a second processor as the grape varieties and wine making techniques used for bulk wine may be different from those required to make bottled wines. To keep the freight costs down, the wine is likely to be shipped overseas in large bladders, not bottles. The wine business may then secure the services of a contract bottler in country or utilise their own offshore bottling facility. Once bottled, the bulk wine would then follow a familiar but separate pathway to market through wholesalers, agents and multiple retailers to find its way to the Chinese consumer. Think too that the actors in this complex wine value chain may also be actors in other value chains for other markets. The grape grower, for example, may be contracted to supply several wineries. All of a sudden, that simple piece of string has turned into a three-dimensional web with each actor in the value chain having links to a range of other actors for a multitude of different products. So while our original wine value chain could become very complex indeed, it's important to remember that the principles of an effective value chain remain the same. By following a demand pull philosophy rather than a supply push one, our chain becomes a value chain rather than a supply chain. With that demand pull approach, comes the many benefits of value chain thinking that will build on understanding what the end user values, adding that value, sharing information, and building collaborative relationships. Next time you buy a fresh apple from a market or have a glass of wine in a restaurant, have a think about the pathway that product may have taken to reach you and what the value chain might look like.